I'm going to legalize marijuana federally. It's now legal in this state. I'm going to move it off Schedule 1 because even though most states now legalize marijuana, the federal government cannot collect taxes on them because it's Schedule 1 federally. I'm going to change that so the feds can start collecting taxes. That'll raise $8.5 billion. I'm going to use that money to start healing farms in rural communities all over this country. The biggest industry today in rural America is prisons. And I'm going to change that. I'm going to make it so we're going to have these healing farms. A lot of the people who are in prisons are nonviolent drug trial crimes. I'm going to move out into these camps and you can stay there for free until you're healed, until you're ready to leave. And you're going to leave with a trade and a job. And neither of them has the capacity to do it. And then, you know, we could eliminate tremendous amounts of waste in government using AI, using blockchain, but you never hear either of these candidates talking about those things. Well, you know, the, the force that's driving inflation, which I think everybody understands in this country, is this, this ballooning deficit. We now have a deficit that's $34 trillion. The, the cost of servicing that debt is larger than our military budget. And within five years, the cost of servicing that debt is going to absorb 50 cents out of every dollar we raise in taxes. Within 10 years, 100% of every dollar that we raise in taxes is going to go to servicing the debt. It's unsustainable, but President Biden and President Trump will not address that because they contributed disproportionately to it. Almost half the debt was run up by these two presidents. In fact, President Trump came into office promising that he was going to balance the budget, and he ran up an $8 trillion debt. He spent more money and every president in the United States history combined from George Washington to George W. Bush, 283 years of U.S. history. And then President Biden is now on track to beat him. We're adding a trillion dollars to the deficit every 90 days. And it's being driven by the war machine, which neither of them can unravel. It's being driven by, um, by chronic disease, which they presided over this explosion of chronic disease, which is now absorbing five times our military budget, 4.3 trillion a year. That's our biggest cost. And neither of them has the capacity to do it. And then, you know, we could eliminate tremendous amounts of waste in government using AI, using blockchain, but you never hear either of these candidates talking about those things. Um, they're about to change all of our lives. They offer tremendous potential for our country. They're the path out of the debt. We need a new industry because we can't cut our way out of this debt. We have to grow our way out of it. We have to grow GDP. And that new industry is the best, has the best potential as AI and also blockchain. But we're driving those out of the country. And neither of these candidates ever talk about either the peril or the potential of those new technologies. You said in an interview last night on News Nation that you would be open to replacing Joe Biden on the Democratic ticket. Has any high level Democratic official reached out to you since you expressed that openness? And do you expect them to, given how hard they've gone against allowing you to participate in their primary and excluding you from the debate stage? No, I, I'm not holding my breath. I, um, you know, we're running our campaign. We're going to be on every ballot by the beginning of next month. And, you know, I think that the Democratic Party now, the superdelegates particularly, are controlled by the big corporate donors. And I think that those corporate donors um, would probably prefer to have Donald Trump as president than to have me as president. I think for the same reason that they didn't like Bernie Sanders. And I think I'm 10 times greater threat to, to the status quo than Bernie Sanders was. AI is going to eliminate a lot of crime, but we're not tr teaching the trades anymore. And the federal government is not providing money, they'll pay for you to go to college, give you loans to go to college, but not to a two year or three year trade school. And we need to change that. But I'm gonna I'm gonna have these farms where people will grow organic food so that we can have, you know, part of the part of the problem with the mental health crisis is we're mass poisoning this whole generation of kids. We have a thousand ingredients in processed foods in this country that are illegal in Europe. We're destroying the soils, we're destroying the environment, we're destroying the health of our kids. When my uncle was president, 6% of Americans had chronic disease, today 60% do. And, and the cost has risen from about 6% of our GDP to almost 19%. And it's destroying our country in so many ways, but most of all, it's destroying the morale, the mental health of our kids. And part of that is social media. There's so many, it's so difficult to be a kid today. And I have seven children and I see the pressures they're under. And they're, you know, they're feeling dispossessed, they're feeling alienated, they're feeling disconnected from community, from society, they're atomized, they're fragmented. And we have to go out as a nation and reclaim these children. We have to connect them to community again, to connect them to purpose, connect them to pride and hope. And that's what I'm gonna do with these healing farms. I talked about it last night. I'm gonna legalize marijuana federally. It's now legal in this state. I'm gonna move it off schedule one because even though most states now legalize marijuana, the federal government cannot collect taxes on them because it's schedule one federally. 
I'm going to change that so the feds can start collecting taxes. That'll raise $8.5 billion. I'm going to use that money to start healing farms in rural communities all over this country. The biggest industry today in rural America is prisons. And I'm going to change that. I'm going to make it so we're going to have these healing farms. A lot of the people who are in prisons are not violent drug trial crimes. I'm going to move out into these camps and you can stay there for free until you're healed, until you're ready to leave. And you're going to leave with a trade and a job. And you're right, the, the addiction, you know, the, we have an illegal drug addiction in this country. We also have an addiction to these psychiatric drugs that are very, very little understood and, and may not be very effective. 120 million as SRI prescriptions last year, 120 million uh, benzo prescriptions. And then of course there's 120 million Adderall prescriptions because our kids all have ADHD now. And nobody's asking why, but we need to change that. We need to end the chronic disease epidemic by ending the exposures that are causing it. And we need to start treating and healing and reclaiming this lost generation of American kids. And we need to then get them into houses because if they don't have houses, we don't have a middle class in this country. And the greatest economic engine in America in world history, the American middle class is being decimated because they do not have equity. And if they, no matter what kind of, of entrepreneurial impulse you have, if you don't have equity, you can't pursue it. That we need to get them into homes. What is your pitch this morning to both Biden voters and Trump voters, to the to the person who supported Biden but watched what they saw last night and can't imagine voting to give that person four more years in office? What's your pitch to that person? And then what is your pitch to the to the Trump voter to win them over to the RFK Jr. camp? Look, I, I'm already beating President Trump and President Biden among young people. I'm also beating them among independent voters, which is the largest voting demographic for the first time in American history this election year. Oh, the self-identified independents are about 43% of American voters uh, versus 27% Democrat, 27% Republican. Um, I have the greatest favorability rating of Trump and, and of President Trump and President Biden. That means people would prefer to vote for me, but they're not going to vote for me, many of those Trump and Biden supporters, because they're scared that the other guy will then win. So they're voting out of fear. And, you know, what I need to do over the next four months, Robbie, is to convince Americans that they can take a risk and vote out of hope, vote out of inspiration, vote out of faith in their future and pride in their country rather than vote out of fear. Uh, the FDR made this, you know, this, this uh, tremendous urging to Americans that we that the only thing we have to fear is, the only other thing we have to fear is fear itself. And that was very wise. And if we, and, and if we succumb to fear, we're gonna get more of the same. You know what's gonna happen. If President Biden or President Trump gets reelected, we're going to have more of the same. We're going to have more division, more vitriol, more anger, more debt, more wars, more chronic disease, <laughs> and and you know the continued uh, diminution of hope in our country. And I'm offering something different. If I get elected, everything's going to change. Everything's going to change. And um, if people want that, if people want their America back, uh, they should vote for me.